Hi, Victor Kiros, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and today I have 10 tips to share with you for when you're buying a house. So, tip number one, here's what I wrote down. Clean up that credit. Anybody will give you a car, anybody can give you a cell phone or even a credit card, but not everybody will give you a house. You see, you have to have a certain credit score and you have to have a certain debt to income ratio to qualify for the mortgages available today. So, clean up that credit. Second tip for you, I would like for you to explore your mortgage options. And I wrote this down because it's good to go see your loan officer, but I'd like for you to go do some research on your own so you have an idea of what's available to you. I mean, if you're a veteran, you definitely want to take advantage of those VA programs. If you have little to no cash down, maybe an FHA program or some type of uh, subsidy program would be something you'd be interested in doing. If you have A credit and tons of resources, maybe you want to go the traditional way, 20% down, conventional financing. That's what sellers love to see. Or if you don't need a loan at all, we go all cash, baby, and make the deal happen quickly. The third tip I have written for you when buying a home is get yourself pre-approved for a mortgage. I know you've done some research on your own, but this is the time where you need to call your bank or your preferred lender let them know that you're interested in getting pre-approved for a mortgage. You're going to go see that loan officer. They're going to ask you for a couple of documents, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements, and of course, they're going to want to run your credit to make sure you meet the minimum requirements. So that's tip number three. Get yourself pre-approved for a mortgage before shopping for houses. You got to know what you're working with money-wise before you go to the store, right? Tip number four. I'd like for you to understand all the costs. Understand all the costs associated with buying a home. It's not just your down payment. There's so much more that you have to pay for, like your upfront taxes, your upfront private mortgage insurance. You have to pay possible escrow fees, title fees, recording fees, deed drawing docs. You might have to pay HOA fees, um, a couple of other items that I have written down here, uh, supplemental property tax, recording fees, and of course your lender origination fees. All of those are part of your closing costs. So when you get pre-approved for your mortgage, make sure your lender estimates and breaks down the, the entire cost of the home purchase. Step number five, Tip number five, I should say for you, is when you're with your loan officer and you're breaking down all the costs, they're going to give you a couple of options, and this is what I want you to do. Tip number five, choose carefully between interest rate and loan origination points. Okay. The loan officer will tell you. He can give you the best interest rate, but he's going to charge you a little bit more in closing costs, upfront fees to get the loan done or he can reduce the amount of closing costs you have to pay and give you a slightly higher interest rate. So the choice is up to you, but I definitely want you to be informed and choose carefully. Think about long-term versus short-term goals, okay? Uh, tip number six, get professional real estate help. That's where I come in. Hello, I'm here to help you search for properties that meet your criteria. Make sure you negotiate a good solid deal Make sure you're protected while in escrow. Somebody here, like myself, to explain all of the disclosures, the addendums, reports and inspections to you, and really baby you through the escrow process until we get you your key. So you gotta find some professional help, like myself here in Southern California, or a great local agent wherever you're located at. Tip number seven, this is something that I wrote down for you, and it's very important that you heed this. Tip number seven, know and prioritize your needs and wants in a home. Listen, you're not gonna get everything unless money is no object. Believe me, I love to live on my own little private island with a helicopter pad with, you know, five different pools and a maid's quarters, you know, but I'm not a billionaire, so that's not gonna happen for me. Maybe it is for you, but either way, I want you to prioritize your needs and wants in a home. Again, you're not gonna get everything, but make sure you get the necessities because you're planning on living there for a couple of years at least. Tip number eight. You're gonna be living there for a couple of years at least, right? So tip number eight is committing to the community. Most people move every five to seven years. Uh, that time frame is different for everybody. Maybe you plan on being in this house for three years, maybe five. Maybe this is the house you're going to retire in. But make sure you're okay with the community. 
and you feel like you can commit there and build your life, you and your family's life, that, there in that area for quite some time in the future. Number nine, tip number nine, understand the entire offer process. A lot of times people get tripped up or they see stuff on HGTV or Bravo Network or whatever type of internet show you're watching um, and they show you how real estate is sold. And let me tell you, real estate doesn't happen in 30 minutes or even an hour. It's a long process. So I really would like for you to understand the offer process and all the steps that you have to take to make sure your offer gets presented the correct way to the seller and hopefully open up the communication lines and negotiate a deal. Tip number 10, last but not least, tip number 10, don't get hung up on the small stuff. Remember, unless money is no object, you might not get everything you want. So don't be negative, be open to things that you can fix. I mean, a lot of cosmetic things, you can change paint, you can change flooring options, you can even change materials in kitchens and bathrooms, but you may not be able to change the location of the property if your budget doesn't allow you to do so. So um, don't get hung up on the small stuff. You can change a light bulb, you can change a fixture. Um, just look at the overall structure and see if it has good bones. See if it's something you can build on for the future. So those are the 10 tips that I wrote down to help you when buying a house. I hope you find them useful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. For more information or to contact me, please visit my website, www.victorforhomes.com.